Uh, the Search for Wanla was a lot of fun to write. It, uh, it actually has many of my favorite things in it. It has, um, it's based on, it's rooted in like old fairy tales. So girl leaves home, girl gets lost in the woods, girl tries to find her way through kind of a wonderland or a neverland or an Oz and kind of comes to understand what family is, what home is. But at the same time, I kind of skinned it in science fiction, so it's got all my favorite things as a kid. So it's got aliens and robots and hover cars and cool tech and stuff. So it was, it was great fun. And, 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 you know, all the books that I've made for kids, um, they've all been fun. They've all had something special. So I've always tapped into what I would have liked as a kid to see if I could make it as an adult. Kids love imagination. Kids love fantasy. Kids love stories that take them on a journey or an adventure in their mind. And, um, and that means a lot to me. That validates uh, me, frankly, and what I do. Because I'm at home, and I'm writing in front of, on a computer by myself, or I'm drawing in a studio, oftentimes alone by myself, with the, you know, my wife and family are there, and I've got friends. But it's not really until I'm out and on the road, and I meet these kids and these young readers, and they're like, I love what you do. Keep making more. That's, that's incredibly inspiring for me, and it keeps me going. The Spiderwick Chronicles, Holly and I kind of finished. I mean, we did the, the first five books, which is what the movie from Paramount Pictures was based on, and then we did the big field guide. And then afterwards, we did a, a trilogy of little stories called Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles. And then we were kind of like, that's enough Spiderwick Chronicles. We kind of wanted to quit while we were ahead, while people still liked us and loved the stories and stuff. It's a surreal feeling having your, this thing you had in your head for a long time, and then you've drawn it and then you've spent time with your friend coming up with a story for it, and then to walk on set and you see a fleet, an army of people building, you know, building a house and care, you know, actors dressed in the clothes that you, you came up with with a pen, and then obviously all the goblins and fairies and trolls um, that went into the Spiderwick Chronicles film. It was, it was an amazing, I felt like a kid. I felt like a kid with like a golden ticket to be able to go on this movie set but the movie was something that I had come up with when I was a kid, so it was, it was incredibly uh, inspiring and, and very much a dream come true moment. I get uh, parents who will come up at a signing with their son or daughter and they'll be like, my child loves to draw or my child loves to write stories, what could they do, what's good advice? And actually for me, the best advice I could give would actually be to the parents because um, I'm a product, I'm a kid who loved to draw but a lot of kids love to draw, and I had my head in the clouds and would come up with stories as I did my drawings. But I'm definitely the product of parents who recognized that and just kind of encouraged it. Um, I went to a public school in South Florida. I was fortunate enough to have teachers at a very young age who also recognized my talent and encouraged it. And that's crucial because when you're that young, when you're a kid and you're like 9, 10, 11, you, you, you can't really helm or control your life. It's up to the adults in your life to kind of do that and so I'm very fortunate that way so if, if you have a youngster that loves doing this sort of stuff you should encourage them because you never know what could happen.